Hello everyone! Welcome to an off the rails train wreck this week on ARG Presents. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined by the man who's driving the train down the tracks and the tracks are broke and the train's on fire and it's full of dynamite. It's the Brent. Boop, boop. There you go. <laughs> Casey Jones. <laughs> Good lord. So, if you joined us last week, you'll remember that we're so low on wheel pieces that we're playing any crazy thing we can find. And this week, we're going to be playing one of the crazier things I've ever gotten into, Britt. Yes. It's a wacky little gimmick. We call it the Emerson Arcadia 2001. Bam. Now, in case you're wondering why we're on this city street for you to watch the video, this is the home of Emerson, Hackensack, New Jersey, Brent. Hackensack, New Jersey. Uh, and we, <laughs> I wanted to find a nice scenic location for this week's this week's episode, so we're here in Hackensack. I feel dirty. That's right. I, I've, I've been to Hackensack and, of course, several other places. I was from Jersey when I was very young. Now, Brent, what do you know about the Emerson Arcadia 2001? Uh, now or then? Now. Now I know quite a bit. Back then, I knew nothing. <laughs> None. I, if you would have asked me a week ago, I would have said, what? And if you'd have showed me a picture, I said, that's a Cleco, man. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'd heard of I'd heard of Emerson. All right. Oh, of course. I'd yeah. heard I've, I've I've heard of 2001. I, spa- yeah, yeah, it's it's a good movie. Arcadia a- was a uh, was a spinoff band for du- some of the guys in Duran Duran. So I I've heard of that. Sometimes I misspell arcade like that. Yeah, these are unrelated items. Though. That's a big extent of it. Ah, uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's funny to think that an outfit like Emerson. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I didn't even know where Emerson was actually from. You know, because sometimes these companies are from Sweden or. Oh whatever. yeah. So good old USA for Emerson, and I, of course, they're synonymous with like radios and stuff. You yeah, know? absolutely. And so, uh, uh, who'd who to thunk it that these guys? Of course, this is this is the uh, '80s, man. Everybody had to give them some of that sweet gaming action. Yes. And, you know what I'm saying? So, let's uh, learn a little bit about the Emerson Arcadia 2001. I love the name, by the way. I love it when they have years. You know. <laughs> Because 2001 was a long time from 1984, <laughs> and it's a long time from uh, from 2019. Yeah. So. so, this this was an early release system right, that came out uh, in May of uh, 1982. That's a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we're going to 40 years almost. Uh, and this thing did, got discontinued 1984. <laughs> so it was a it, it, was, it was a short trip. It did, uh, and it know, was late in one of those and early in the other. Yeah. So, so, but you know, this thing takes cartridges. It's a, it's got a. Uh, whoops! There's a little ding dong. Uh, it's got a uh, Signetics 2650 CPU. You ever heard of the Signetics nope. CPU? I hadn't either. That's another weird one, eh? One uh, K RAM. Not bad. It's our one big that's, K. That's, the, that's where the one from 2001 yeah. comes from. <laughs> that's right. It doesn't have 2,000 megs or whatever. <laughs> It's got uh, it's the graphics on this thing. Get this, pr- brace yourself. You got your you got tw- uh, 128 by 208, and then you can go crazy and go to 128 by 104 with eight colors. Bam! So there you go. Uh, you got two uh, 12 button keypad and fire button like uh, sort of like uh, Intellivision esque controllers. Yeah, it's a phone. It's a phone pad. You know, and it's uh. It's a uh, it's not an unattractive system to be to be completely honest with you. I thought it looked pretty good. Uh, the controllers sort of fit nicely in the little in a little uh, in a holster gimmick. It looks a lot like a, uh, an Intellivision with, with a they, lot. If like they, the they stuck a joystick through that yes. that godforsaken disc, yep. You know these keypad things were all the rage. We talked this before. We've covered a lot of machines where they stuck these keypads on there because everyone thought they had to have a thousand, like a phone style controller. Well, I think that was what they were trying to do. I think they were actually trying to make it look like a phone to be more, uh, uh, less off-putting to people who didn't know what was going on. I honestly think that. Well, I don't know about that. I just think they thought it'd be cool to have a bunch of. I thought they make it thought to make it look a little more interesting, but and I do, maybe they could use the functionality. Who knows? S- something to note on the uh, sticks on these things. While it has the twelve face buttons, it only has one side fire button. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, one. That would be annoying because the Intellivision has one, two on both sides. Well, it has them on both sides, but it only has one on each side. Right, yeah. right. So now the funny thing about this is. Uh, I didn't realize this. These, this is p- part of sort of a family of 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 controllers. Okay, or, or not controllers, but of of uh, c- 
consoles. Oh. Right? You know oh, what are I mean? you talking about the clones? Well, it's <clears throat> we're, we're not going to we're not going to call them clones because they're not really clones. They're more like uh, everyone took sort of the same parts and they sort of made the same system, but without the compatibility. <laughs> right. So the and the hardware this is weird. So. Um, the hardware was sort of licensed by Philips, and Philips would license it to a lot of people. And so you had, uh, just to name a few of these systems, the <laughs> you had the Intertron VC4000, the Voltmace. You had a bunch of crazy things. You had, now listen to some of these names. The uh, 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 Ad- AdVision Home Arcade, the Prestige MP- MPTO3, the Telefever. I like the Telefever. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite as well. That's, that's, a, that's a good one. But basically, these game systems all have uh, are based on the same kind of chipset, and so what that means is they're all cartridge compatible with each other. Sorta. They oh, I mean, for the most part, the cartridges will work. And there's a big list you can get. I found that there are yeah, there's like over a dozen. There yeah. are over a dozen clones of this system. And the funny thing is, um, <clears throat> there's a group of people that there's a, there is sort of a community out there for people that are in the industry. I found a lot of information. Uh, on the system, yeah, there's tons of information. You know, and and and, uh, and and there's a uh, I'm not I don't know how active they are, uh, Brent, but there's there's a community of of uh, of people that are into it. So, this thing had some games, uh, Brent. Let's just go there, uh, and a lot of their games were very clone cl- like uh, arcade cloney. So yes. we, we were right at home with a lot of these games. Uh, but they did have some lights and stuff. Yes. Uh, including um, the game that I'm doing this week. They also had... Which is a rarity because yeah. it is... Uh, they it, also had... The, uh, uh, well, no, they had more than... they had, oh, What do you mean it's a rarity? I don't understand. That they had officially licensed games. Oh, why? Why do you think that's rare? Just because well, no one was going to pay much for the lights? And no, the, because they, they tried to release a ton of other licensed games like the Pac-Mans and the Defenders and Atari. Well, this was at the time when the Atari had the Sue machine uh, with the Gatling gun style lawsuits and Emerson got caught up in that. Well, so <laughs> the problem is... They had a Pac-Man ready to go that was called Pac-Man. They had Pac-Man, Berserk, Phoenix, a bunch of more. Yeah, and then they got sued into oblivion and that's all right. that ended. That's that's right. I mean, they, they, were, they were worried about getting sued. I'm not sure they got sued or not for real. I'm not 100% sure. I couldn't find anything where it said they actually got... They, they got full... I saw people that said they did get sued, and I saw people that said the threat of a suit scared them into changing the game. I, I think they actually got sued. So what they did was they changed these games into some not sort of similar, but not totally, you know, exactly right. the same games. It's the same old shtick uh, on this thing. Now, they did have some obscure sort of arcade games. I didn't, Absolutely. like, for example, aside from the one I picked, Route 16, did you know it's an arcade game? I didn't heard of that. Another one. Jump Bug. <laughs> yeah, I'll play, yeah, I'll play Jump Bug. Oh, you've played Jump yeah. Bug? Okay, well, there you go. That sounds like a, a something you want to avoid at a hotel. <laughs> well, see, I didn't know that your game was an arcade game. Yeah, I'd I, never heard of it I before. hadn't either. I hadn't either. So, But we'll get into that. So, this, believe it or not, this is going to blow your mind. The Arcadia console and the, and its and its uh, uh, all of its sub-buddies, you know, uh, Bandai Arcadia and the... the uh, uh, Le- leisure Dynamics, Leisure Vision. I, mean, I could go on. There's hundreds of. The- yeah. Oh, there's not. There's a lot. There's over a dozen. The this little group of machines had th- over 350 game cards released for him. That's an astounding amount of games for this this bunch. Well, I mean, think about that. For, now, again, we're to, we're covering the Emerson version today, but these other versions went on for quite that, a while. I was about to say the Emerson did not have that many. Yeah, but oh well, no, I mean, but it. it, it they were compatible, so it could it could play these games. They weren't fully compatible. They were uh, they were almost totally compatible, from what I read. I'm just telling you. That's I, it I read differently. Uh, I read that there there were several compati- compatibility. Well, I mean, issues. when you 350 cards, you're gonna you're gonna run into a couple. Yeah, because the Emerson only released about 35 games. Like, so let's talk about just a few of these games here that were that just I'm I'm not gonna go through a huge list of these, but some of these that are that are I've, I've found interesting. Uh, in fact, one just popped up on the screen. Astro Bear, this is a game that uh, uh, I used to play in the arcade. I, I didn't know there was any officially licensed home ports of this. Is this one that got the official? This is an officially, yeah, Astro Invader, an officially licensed uh, 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 port of the uh, of the arcade game. 
Now this thing had the stuff you would have expected it to have. Uh, it had uh, it had uh, space evader clones. It had oh sure. You know it had a uh, crazy uh, Pac-Man knockoffs. It had uh, football. It had baseball. I noticed that a lot of the games on this uh, this this thing seems to to me it falls somewhere between like it's like. Uh, it's like the Intellivision uh, and maybe the uh, the Spectrum or the or the uh, uh, Coco had like a child, and it was. I mean, the games are like. I mean, they're not bad looking games, really. They're they? not. <clears throat> I've heard, however, that the the huge failing of the Emerson Arcadia two thousand one was its dreadful, dreadful controls. Well, I, that. <laughs> Isn't that the failing of all these systems that have that keypad thing? Well, I, I've heard that the, the disc, when they jammed the joystick in the <laughs> middle of that thing to try to give it arcade action, it made it somehow worse. Like, you're up, down, left, right, you're, you're on, brother, but anything that requires a diagonal and you're screwed. Well, you know, uh, um, you could get these gimmicks for the for the Intellivision that would give you some, that little nub down yeah. there, and they all suck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, I'm I'm glad that Emerson just cut out the middleman and forced the nub upon you. Well, part of the problem is, I mean, that's a controlled disc. It's not like it doesn't yeah, work crap. like a joystick. It's yeah. not like there's micro switches in there. It's a weird pressure sensitive, you know. And, and I'm very surprised that they uh, that so many people went this route that uh, to use this disc thing. I well, guess they thought it was awesome, but it really wasn't. I, hey, I don't know. Or, you know, it, 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 I guess, it, I mean, if you think about it, after the Atari joystick, all the systems, it seems like ColecoVision and television, this. If you go back and look at a uh, the, the 5200, the 78, they all, uh, the 7800, they finally came out with just a, a, a proper, but it was horrible, you know. And then, yeah. so sticks, it's funny, the Atari stick was almost a thing of beauty and perfection. It was. And everything degraded after that. It, all the way up to the, Nintendo uh, D-pad. Like people and love, then, people love the ColecoVision. I do too, but its controller was junky garbage. too, yeah. and it was a, it was a similar. It wasn't a disc. It was that little crap joystick, and it was no good. Yeah, you know. So, eh, what are you gonna do? But people, people thought these were a big deal. I noticed on here as I was looking at this list that they also have an, a, a licensed uh, home port of the game uh, Pleiades, uh, mm -hmm. which is a game we used to another game me and you used to play. Back in the days, those are some obscure. They must have got these for a, a for a song. Well, yeah, I, I think when the Atari thing fell through, from what I researched, uh, they scrambled and they were like, "Oh crap, what are we gonna do?" Yeah, and uh, they turned to pretty much anyone that would sell a name to them, and they made a game off of yeah. it. Yeah, um, they also uh, another a couple of other ones that caught my eye was they had a uh, licensed version of The End, which is another weird arcade game, and another one. That we've actually covered right here, Turtles. They had to license. Yep. Turtles I, got a. Uh, it's the ultimate uh, ported arcade game to like low end systems. You know what I'm saying? I, I almost picked Turtles because I, I enjoy the game so much, but I knew we'd already been there, yeah, so I had to yeah, go somewhere I, different. I, I had a very similar situation because I was like, "Oh, Turtles, we can do that." But I mean, hey, Turtles is Turtles, and it, it, we already played the perfect version. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So, uh, out of this. Out of this library of, of, of beauties, we had to pick a couple games to, to, to try out. Now, uh, I would not say these games are uh, deep. <laughs> this, this is a more of a Twitch uh, system. I didn't see any. Uh, I didn't know, uh, notice any uh, deep role playing games or other. Oh, in there. okay, no. Yeah. And so, <laughs> no, you're not gonna. I didn't see anything that looked like a, an adventure style game from, right. from the Atari or anything like that. Right, right. So, I guess I'll lead the dance this week because I think, I, I, honestly, I think your game's a, a little more interesting than mine. But I will say, I, since I never heard of this, I had to go for it. So, I was looking through, I, I thought this week that there had so many arcade ports of obscure arcade games. I was like, you know, I'm gonna try to find something that's an arcade port that I've not heard of. And there were actually several on here, I've mentioned a couple of them. And I ended up going to the game. I swear to you, but I've never heard of this nope. game. Never seen it. And it's called Jungler. Yes. The Jungler, man. Now, it's not... I thought... What, here's what, the funny thing is when, is when I looked into it, I was like, oh, man, I bet this is like a Jungle Hunt clone. I, I did the exact same thing. I yeah. was like, oh, cool, a Jungle Hunt clone. And when I, no. so, and then, Or maybe <laughs> some sort of juggling type thing. No, I didn't think that at all. So, Why but, would Jungler point to juggle? What, they just misspell it? They could have misspelled it, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Maybe a guy juggled in the jungle. 
A coconut. Or a, a jungle, jungle type thing. Yeah. yeah well, it's none of these things. No, it's not. The closest uh, game that I could compare this to is maybe something like uh, uh, Casey's Crazy Chase or. It's Snake. Well, no, it's not Snake. This it, is Battle Snake. It's ba- <laughs> Battle Snake. Well, that's there you go. That's, that's a better name than what I had. By the way, before you get into it, because yeah. I don't think you're going to mention this because it's on the arcade version. Yeah. This thing had a crazy cabinet. Oh, really? It I had, didn't look at the cabinet. It had bezel art that went over the screen a little bit. One of those gimmicks. It was. It, I'm not saying it was great. I'm not even saying it was good. It was just kind of crazy. All right. <laughs> well, so what do you got here? Uh, in jungle what you've got here is like you said it's a it's a weird worm based game yeah. all right so so what are you doing on this thing well again based on an arcade game, i guess i should go into the arcade game first this was developed by konami uh and published by stern so this is an old stern game now this only had two home ports all right the other one is something I've never I've heard of, but I don't know what it is. The Tommy Tudor. Have you Put ever heard it on of? the wheel. <laughs> the it's Tommy, going on the wheel, folks. The Tommy Tudor's on the wheel. It's going. <laughs> I uh, I'm just not familiar with that. But so think about this. Jungler had two ports. This was one of them. That's why I, that's the main reason I picked it because you can't really play it on anything else except for the Tommy Tudor. So uh, this got released in the arcade way back in December of 1981. All right. Yeah, it was it was one of the earlies. Yeah. It's one uh, of the openers. Well, this is uh, this is I mean, I'm talking in, in, in the arcade. It oh. got released in '81. Yeah, and so uh, what you've got here is a uh, you know standard arcade game at the time, but it's in it is in color, yep. and uh, you you basically control a, a, a worm, right? And you there's another worm, and you what you try to do is blow segments off that worm until he's smaller than you then you can i guess you just basically eat him it's oh, what, it's okay what i want to stop you right there yeah they're not worms or snakes they're they are. snakes okay well it doesn't matter they look more like like show me a snake that's segmented like that there's no snake that look like that uh oh i mean there's no worms look like that either i'll grant you okay uh, there well yeah, what, what can we what a well, beetle the arcade actually says snake versus snake action okay <laughs> That's what it says? Yes. Snake versus snake action? Yes. Listen, they're little balls that look like a spaceship is strapped they, they to the They look like little centipedes. Also, maybe. how many worms or snakes shoot? Well, you, venom, yep, no, <laughs> the snakes can spit venom. Oh, boy, you're stretching now. Did you work for Konami? <laughs> are, you, are you representing these guys? So anyway, you've got a big maze, and you run through it. You do. And those you, are, and those you, things are all true. And you try, and you, or you don't run, whatever, crawl, slither, whatever you want to do. And you, and you would go after the other, the other uh, combatant. Let's go there. Um, I don't know how big a hit this was, but I do remember that Graham mentioned that he actually played this back in the day. <laughs> so, so there you go. My God, I'm looking. Britt pulled up the uh, <laughs> that that's Britt pulled up the art for this game. That is that is hideous looking. So. Uh, and you know, so you've got enemy creatures that appear in one of three colors. Uh, red creatures are longer in length than the player, and that basically means if they will kill you if you touch them. Yes. Yeah. You know, yellow when they turn yellow, they're the same length uh, size as you. So if you run into them, it doesn't it doesn't kill you. Nothing happens. Right. And when they're green, you can eat them. Right. It sounds weird. It is weird, isn't it? It's yeah. a weird game. Now. Uh, the arcade had some, uh, it was, I mean, the graphic was okay. It was okay. It was, it was okay. It was no great shake. And the home release, uh, it, it's, I mean, they got it right. I mean, it plays pretty much the same way. You go through the maze, uh, you shoot the bad guy, and you eventually, and you eat him I mean, when he's smaller. And I sat and played, I played this thing for, I mean, forever. <laughs> it was not, it wasn't, I didn't find it difficult. What did you think about that? When I fired it up for the first time, because I didn't have a clue what was going on, uh, I kept dying, and then uh, when I started up my second game, I played forever. Yeah. The, the AI on this, there's a little bit there lacking because uh, uh, you can basically get them in a pattern, and also you can <clears throat> upgrade your worm with the you can the, the, add segments right basically. that appear on the screen. You can get, eat them as power ups. Yeah. Um, and once you get to a certain length where the computer would have to shoot you literally a dozen times to get you below his level, you can play forever. Yeah. It, it, I didn't find it hard. <clears throat> now, 
And the computer always, when he dies, he always respawns in the exact same space. Yeah. And you get just <clears throat> enough time to line up so just when he appears, you can blast him down to edible level almost immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I noticed that this is there's a few subtleties about this game that I found odd. Um, and these kind of snake-like games, uh, this is the only one I've ever seen where you could literally stop and go ex and go backwards. Backwards, yes. And so if if uh, if this guy's on your tail, but you're bigger than him, you can just slam him with the brakes around and eat him. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and he and he doesn't do he that does that do often. That. He don't, he'll he will do it, but it's not it's very unusual for him to do it. And something else that's strange about it is that he 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 is sort of evasive, but he's I it doesn't seem like there's a lot of intellect there. You no. know what I'm saying? It's not like the ghost of Pac Man where you're like No something yeah, some sort of something's going on. Like this guy just I mean he He'll run away from you, but that's pretty much the extent of it. So it basically, you have to head him off the pass, basically. And that's not difficult. The AI on this is is rock bottom stupid. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd go that far. It's not that bad. It is. It, no, it is. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the AI is very poor. The game itself is uh, lacking in a lot of areas. A lot of there's no complexity at all. Now it does have uh, 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 64 game variations on the card, and I went through these. And from what I could tell, that's what that's that's what it's built as. I could tell that, that you had a choice, much like the old uh, Atari. You could go through with the I guess the uh, game select switch, yeah. and you could pick different mazes. And so I, which doesn't matter. Well, I mean, it's, if you get bored of one maze, because uh, from what I, could, I I picked, I went through and played like a bunch of different mazes, and I couldn't tell any difference in the game, except that I was in a different maze. Now the different mazes were uh, more complex. You know, sometimes yeah, like, th this. This is a game that you have to have a second player. Well, you can't play two players simultaneous. So well, you're, you're screwed. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, the, you're saying it should have had that, right? Well, because killing the you just kill the AI over and over and over. I'm not even sure that that would make it that much fun, to be honest with you. Uh, some interesting things about uh, ju Jungler I, that, I, that I thought were uh, amusing and interesting. There was a tabletop handheld version of this that was released. Uh, in eight in eighty, uh, let's see, eighty two by an outfit called Gacken. So I'm assuming an, an, an release sort of, the Gacken. Yeah, release the Gacken. Yeah, uh, and apparently this was sort of uh, let's say ripped off or a, a, an homage was paid in some games that I've heard of but never never played. Maybe some people out there have heard of these. Uh, there was a home clone of this from Broder Bun uh, called Apple Panic. Have you heard of that? Mm -mm. And another one, another game that was uh, uh, from uh, was uh, called Serpentine. I'd heard of that one too. So nope. yeah, I never heard. I, I'd heard of those. And here's I get this. This is really bizarre. This is really, I couldn't believe this little tidbit. Jungler was one of the first titles made available in the Microsoft Xbox 360 game room. Remember the game room? Why would you? I don't know. I guess it goes without saying that the gamer doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> gamer got shut down. <laughs> That's the way she goes. Now, this, the, the, the concept of this, the, the very base concept of this, is a concept that lives on even today. The eat the bigger one, uh, you know, there are uh, some uh, games out now on cell phones and computers and stuff that the whole thing is eat a little bit of stuff until you're big enough to eat the bigger guy and keep growing. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's neat th to know that this concept has legs, but uh, this implementation <laughs> of it... I see what you did there. Them, but it doesn't have legs. This implementation of it is it, just dull. Box looks cool. Eh, not really. Well, I thought it looked okay. It's got, you know... <laughs> no, nothing. You, so you didn't like the game. Well, no, I was very disappointed. Well, I was very disappointed in this. I, I will say, I, uh, I mean, I played this long enough to feel that I knew what I was getting into. Because I never, once I started my second game, I could be playing it right now. Yeah. Well, this this won't improve your uh, mood towards this game. This apparently, or the system, from what I read going through all the community, oh, this know. was yeah. actually one of the more heralded games yeah, in the I system. Know. <laughs> so this is this is this may be the high water mark of the Emerson Arcadia 2001. I did find a single review. A, it's a more modern review uh, from a, from the video game critic. It gave this a C. 
A C. So I'd say a C is probably about right. I would even go a little lower. You're t you're tough. I, it, you hate when, everything. When you're when the AI is so stupid that you can literally play forever, that's not a game. That's an exercise. It's a game. It's oh, it's a game. So we had uh, we had. Some, <laughs> listen, you're poo pooing everything. We did have a review sent in on this bad boy. Oh. Let me navigate my way to it. It went out to be from Graham W. Oh, Beck, yes. Is it? It's the one and only. <laughs> Graham writes, uh, Jungler is an arcade game I love. This is actually a licensed Konami title for the Emerson Arcadia, and I thought it was fairly well done. It was very bright on the eyes, especially with that cyan background, but the game plays quite well. It's a little slower than the arcade version. It only has one enemy on the screen at one time. Uh, but that enemy is quite good at chasing you down. It's a decent game, and at least feels like the arcade version of this game. Six out of ten. Yeah, I will. So that he mentioned, the graphics on this, yeah, absolutely fine. It, every, there's never a point where you're like, man, where's the uh, where's the bad guy, or like, how how many segments do I have? Am I bigger than the other guy? That stuff they did nail. They nailed real well. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, I, the, I played. Did you actually try the arcade version of this? No, mm -hmm. it's better. But, you know, it, and it, I, it's it's a simple game from a simpler time. Hey, that's day. true. So, as we move along here, Brent. Yes. Uh, now, I have to say, when you picked your game, I looked at just the title of it. I yeah, thought to right. myself, this has got to be a Brent game because it's, it's, <laughs> the title looks like so stupid. Tell the people what you picked. Aaron, I went a whole different direction. You went, man, let's go mainstream. Let's go. Jungler is let's mainstream. Go, let's go by the numbers. In your little box world, yeah, you, you're living you're living the high life. I went the other way, yes, and you. I went for a hobo. Hobo. Yes. No, just the name of this. Who would go buy this? It's about, you know, for my son to experience video games, the fantasy world, let's get hobo. That's right. So, let's go over... The interesting world of hobo, okay? <laughs> it's the deadly world of hobo. Well, I found the the official story of this game, and I and I would like to share it with all the people at home. It's got a story. It does. Oh boy, I can't wait to hear this. <clears throat> it is the story of a hobo trying to catch his freight train out of town. To reach his train, he must cross the highway without being hit by cars. Across the highway, he must climb ladders to scale wall, which are policed by marching cops. If caught, Hobo goes to jail, but Hobo can jump over the cops. Reaching freight yard, Hobo must jump across tops of moving trains to go out of town. That is the story That's, of a Hobo. I like the fact that he just simply referred to as Hobo. That's right. He's... He's so low in the social rungs that he doesn't even get a name. Just he's just hobo. And you know how I, he's one up from bum. You know how you know how I know that the story is important to the game of hobo. Why? It is it is plastered as a sticker on the back of the cartridge. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, something we something we failed to mention in the beginning. Uh, the Emerson Arcadia had three style of cartridges. Yeah. Oh, okay, they, I didn't they, know that. They had normal size cartridge, which is which is about the size of a twenty six hundred game. All right. And then you had your really rare uh, mid size cart, which, oh. which was a little bit taller. All right. And then you had massive book tome, okay. which was what Hobo was came on, which is literally the size of two. Uh, Atari cartridges stacked on top of each other, and you plant it into the system like, like you're like a victory flag. I love it. I didn't know about the cartridge size. That's and, awesome. And, and the cartridge is large enough to not only have this uh, the story and instructions on a sticker on the back in English, but also in French. And in French, I, I, I think I think I, I don't know the language, but I, I've, no I've taken the time to translate it in my own head. Yeah. And this is not a game about hobo, no. 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 This is this is a game about Hob from the planet Obo. Oh God! Because, You're really stretching now. Because, no, 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 no. Hear me out. Because no mortal man can do what this hobo does. He's got super speed to dodge cars running through traffic. He has super leap. To jump in one motion from a standing location over top of a cop. Yeah. <clears throat> and he has to, he also has zero fear as he <laughs> jumps from train car to train car, moving trains 
as he gets to his destination. He should have fear. No, <laughs> so, he should have a lot of fear if we, when I'm playing him. So let's talk about Hob. <laughs> Hob Wait. is a three-screen game uh, where you play two of them in an isometric view. The very first screen has Hob trying to cross. Please, refer to him as Hobo. No, his Hob. name is no, no, no. This is not a hobo's life. This is a life of an alien named Hob. It looks like a hobo's life to me. He has to cross seven lanes of traffic. Seven. And all the <laughs> lanes of traffic are going in different directions. Yes, who designed this freeway? <laughs> uh, and there's no median either. So you just basically, you're both. you got to get across the highway of certain death. So after you somehow, some, and if you get hit by a car, the paramedics run and pick up Hob <laughs> yes, and take do. him off screen. At least you know he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> If you see what the what the pixel art is for the guy in the stretcher, he does not look okay. <laughs> he looks a little rough. The second scene has oh man, that's really messed up. Has Hob uh, uh, scaling the side of a building, kind of like through fire escapes, except that this is the most military uh, reinforced building of all time. There are cops. It's like Fort Knox or something. He's trying to everywhere. break everywhere. And uh, uh, like I said, Hob can single jump, standing if standing still, jump completely over a, an officer of the law. Yeah. One shot, no problem. Uh, so he scales up this building, right? And that's also I isometric view. And you get to the final stage. The final stage is a rail yard, and it, it's a much much set up like the freeway, where trains are just whizzing every direction, back and forth. And sure. You might think, well, you just go across the rails, no problem. No, no, no. Hob don't play that way. No. Hob jumps from the top of rail cars to another rail car going the opposite direction to ride it across to jump to the other train going the other direction all the way to his destination. He's like Indiana Jones or something. He, he, he's, he's, he's a superhero. He's something. He's a superhero. When you get to the end, uh, you know, it, it, Hob does a little dance. <laughs> it's uh, a stupid dance. It and, looks more like a spastic fit. And then uh, the game repeats on a higher speed and a higher difficulty level. And, and where you that, have zero chance. And at that point, yeah. just turn it off and start again. Yeah, because once you get through the initial bunch, that freeway, it's just, it's like it's, it's, insane. Yes. There there are tricks. I mean, the, the, the uh, freeway section, when you're first playing it, is difficult, but it's doable because you, there's the gimmick there is you is get patterns. behind a car and you go run, you go with well, there, the traffic. There's, there's patterns yeah. actually, uh, but boy, on the loop, forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. It's super speed. Um, a few things about this: this was actually released by Emerson. Okay, uh, it was a first party game in 1983. This was one of the last games for the system. Uh, it was actually box number 37, because Emerson does that box numbering thing. Yeah. Uh, so this was 37 on the list. This was also, the reason why the cart for this was so big was this had 8K of uh, memory on it. That explains that it's more, it's more in-depth than I would it, say it, the majority of games. Yeah, and the graphics uh, for Hobo are really good for the time because they have the isometric view that kind of diagonal looking view uh which really gives it a nice feel except for the last stage which you're kind of looking down the train yard from an above view yeah and hob is just basically a stick figure at this point to show how small he is in comparison to how large the trains are uh which is still not to proper scale but it gives you a little more uh, uh understanding of what's going on the, and the game, the, each stage is very, very different. Uh, when the first stage, when you're running across the highway, you, it's all about dodging cars. It's all about speed and accuracy. The second stage, when you're, when you're avoiding the cops, it is very much a stealth game. You have to wait. You have to. <laughs> I mean, it is. I get it. It is. You're it sort is. of right. You're sort it's, of right. It's a stealth game because you, you I'm have about to, that way. You have to wait. You have to patiently wait for your cops to go by because the cops can come as singles or as pairs. <clears throat> if they come in pairs and you're in front of them, you're screwed. You should also mention that when the cops catch you, they take you to they, jail. They, ha they hail you on. This yeah. thing actually has little cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it does. It, they actually show a little cutscene of your guy getting pulled off the jail. And, and it even says jail on the side this of the This sort of building. plays like an arcade game because the cutscenes are real quick, you know? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, 
that when I first pl loaded this up, I was like, I just looked at that traffic. I mean, it looks like you're just like, my God. It looks very ominous. It does. And then I got killed over and over before I finally figured out a trick to get across. And uh, yep. I, the train, or the uh, second stage, I also found pretty difficult until I figured yep. out you could jump. <laughs> Whoops. I was trying to get up without jumping, which you can do, by the way. You I can did it. do it, yes. The third stage is uh, 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 almost incossible. Well, and what 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 hoses it is? It, it's at first since the you look you're looking down the train yard, the the length of track you have to work with gets smaller and smaller. And it seems yeah. like that would be a benefit, but the problem is, the hobo can't see when the next train's coming, and if you ride off the track, you die. Yeah. So at the very tippity top, where there's very little track going across the screen. It's super tough, isn't it, to yeah. get across there? Yeah, and, and especially since the first time you get to the stage, your your inkling is not to jump on top of the train cars. It's to avoid the train right. cars. So I died t plenty of times trying to go in front of the trains and get and step on the track and die. It's funny. I jumped right on the train. I just really? Yeah, it's the first wow. thing I did. I was like, I mean, because we'd already avoided something, so I just wanted the natural something that... that Plus, I looked at how the level looked. I was like, at the top of the screen, there's no way you could not get on a train. Because there's little, so little track, you can just know where to run. I, I, I obviously didn't look at it, but I eventually... You did loop the game, right? I did loop it, yeah. But I okay. could never loop it. I never got past the freeway again. Yes, again. because the traffic is insane. That's that the problem, and that is the... That's, you know... <laughs> well, I think if you played it, if you own this game, if this was your game that you played on... A semi-regular basis, I bet you would find tricks to get past the this sped up version. And I, I don't think you would find any. I no, you would. <sighs> because think of how many times this is a game where when you first start, you're gonna die a lot, and as you learn tricks, you get better. I can't imagine what the third level would be like. I mean, it's just there's so trains no, going. no. I mean, the third level of the cars. If you can manage to loop it twice, yeah. I, Listen, I'm not buying that. I don't think uh, there's no kid that's getting past this thing twice. I wanna, oh, I, no, meet, you're insane. I want to meet the no, man that can pull insane. that trick. I, I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen a lot. Uh, uh, and in fact, I might go home and just grind it to prove you wrong. Yeah, you do that. You make sure you record it too. I like to see that. Uh, but this game, uh, you know what this reminded me of? Yeah, Frogger. No. <laughs> Freeway. No, oh, no. What? Congo Bongo. It had. Because Congo Bongo has well, that yeah. multi stages it does, and has an isometric uh, view. Yeah, sort of. It doesn't. Uh, the third stage doesn't really remind me of anything. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, Congo. I can see where you're going. It's not nearly as attractive as Congo Bongo. Well, it's fun. also a. Oh, no. It's not as fun as Congo Bongo. Come on, but it's I, not bad. I, I'm not gonna say Hobo is another Yeti because it's not that good. No. Okay. However, on a system that has very little to offer in originality that aren't just arcade clones this is a pretty incredible game i i, I will say I, I was pleasantly surprised to be completely honest with you i uh uh after playing jungler it's just jungler is so simple yes and so here comes a, a game that has three stages it has a scene a death scene cut scenes yep it has uh it's uh, a complete it's a it has now i mean you know the train level reminds me a lot of the of the so you've got the freeway level of Frogger, isometrically done, and the, 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 this reminds me of a sort of a depth-ready version of the water part. Because uh, if you look at this, it's, sure. it's almost like jumping on the logs. I mean, it's not like they reinvented a wheel here. No, I, I don't. No, no, but, I, I don't think they did. But I think they took uh, three concepts that they had in mind for levels, and they they executed them well. However, we do have the benefit. Of playing this uh, either on joysticks or a modern or a modern joystick or a keyboard. I use a keyboard on this, which one. I have heard makes all the difference because the Emerson controllers were so bad that the diagonals were so hard to hit on the isometric levels that it made the game nearly unplayable. Yeah. Which is incredibly unfortunate because this um this isn't going to save a system, folks. I'm not trying to imply that, but I think this could have been. A, a breakaway hit for the system if it controlled better. I will say this about the Emerson. We, I didn't have any trouble uh, emulating it. Uh, it does work with joysticks, keyboard, and everything. And uh, uh, there are a lot of titles out there to explore yeah. if this thing's your bag. And this is probably, I mean, I, I have to say, uh, 
it was certainly a more interesting in my game. I mean, if it's not as playable, just because, it, like I said, the, the the difficulty of the second level ramps up to exponentially. So it does. It goes where it gets. So that that insane. I dock it. And one thing you're talking about, like another Yeti. Yeti, it was you can play that one going forward. You know, well, well in this one, once you get past the train yard the first time, you're pretty much screwed. Well, I, 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 and I agree, you're not going to just start getting better. Mm. Uh, but I think everything on this is doable. Uh, none of the levels, I think, are were so hard, even at the accelerated speed, that uh, you're never going to get past them. I think it's just going to take a bit of a grind. And I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. okay with that. I do like the fact that Hobo, there are some small things that I find amusing. Like, for example, in a, in a Manic Miner, like a thing that your extra men at the top of the screen, they do, they sort of move and occasionally will dance yeah and also when hobo will dance when he completes it it's and the game goes terrific yeah i like that too now, when you beat it it's just terrific now this you did it this did have a uh, uh review back in the day oh okay uh from tilt which i don't know what tilt is uh but they gave the game a six out of six perfect score i think that's a little generous but yeah uh, it is but uh yeah the sound was good. The graphics were incredible. Um, this uh, this is something if you're gonna if you're gonna put an Emerson emulator on your system, play it. If you are going to buy an Emerson system, you probably aren't gonna run out and buy Hobo because it's about 160 bucks. Yeah, and I should mention that Jungler, uh, you're looking at. The carts twenty to five to forty bucks, and the box versions eighty bucks. Yeah, so pretty pricey. We had a review come in again from our good buddy Graham W. Vepke on Hobo. Uh, Graham writes, "This is a strange game. It starts with an isometric Activision freeway clone, similar to the modern Cossy Road, and then another isometric stage, which is a Donkey Kong slash Loader inspired level." climbing ladders and avoiding enemies. And the third and final level is a glitchy, weird perspective frogger log jumping clone on top of trains. Once you reach into that level, it loops and everything gets faster. The game is too difficult and I didn't really want to keep playing four out of 10. Oh, I think that's harsh, so Graham. Graham. Graham dropped the hammer. I think that's harsh. <laughs> Graham dropped the hammer big time on that bad boy. You know, I, I enjoyed the game for what it was. I, I, would, I would give it a six out of 10. Yeah, yeah, and I should mention. I might even go to seven. I, I, will, I play, compared to your game, which I played for about fifteen minutes, yeah. because I, I, I just never died again. Yeah, uh, I played Hobo for about for not quite an hour, but close to it. Yeah, and uh, not, I, I enjoyed it all. Yeah, just not not in a row. I had start over a lot. Whoa, in an hour. <laughs> I mean, yeah, um, you know, just for closure on our Amish Arcade. Uh, I did look up what it would cost to go buy a Nimrus Arcade because uh, you know I always do because every I fall in love with everything we do and this this thing having so many games I thought it might be fun uh, you could, but this thing is not cheap uh, the console uh, was going for between one hundred and twenty five dollars all the way up if you're trying to get the box stuff up in, up near four hundred dollars wow so this thing wow. it, this thing ain't this ain't cheap brother. Something else that's not cheap. You know what it is. It's not the wheel. It's the wheel. Oh. We paid top dollar for this wheel, Brent. Give me a break. We did? Yeah, so. I didn't You that. don't know what we added this week, but I'm going to tell you. We have hit the end of the Brent uh, cavalcade of baloney, and we've got the Enterprise 64 stuck on here. I don't know what that is, but I've not known what any of this stuff is for the most part. You know what? So. I'm going to spin us up something good. I'm getting a good, solid spin. Although I enjoyed our adventure today. I thought it was interesting, you know. I mean, it was it was something. Okay, I uh, can't see what that is. That and Brent Survey says... Steam! Okay, so tell the people how this one's going to work, because even I'm not sure. We are going to pick games from our Steam library. No buying anything new. You have to give something you currently own. Uh, which Aaron, we might have to play a little, uh, a little passy passy, if uh, we don't own each other's games. But this has to be something that you can purchase on the Steam store and that you have purchased from the Steam store right now. Lock up the library. We both have fairly extensive libraries on Steam. So how modern is this going to be? As modern or as retro as you want. Steam's got it all, baby. 
I think I know what I'm playing already. I, when you put oh. this category on the on the map, I thought because I'm not, you know me, I'm not going crazy. I'm not going to play some modern stuff, but I've got I've got something. Uh, I've got a gimmick here. We can give a shot. So that should be interesting. Hey, uh, we just want to uh, as we close up shop here. Want to mention that uh, of course we're available uh, on YouTube at our at the Amigos uh, AR the uh, Amigos Retro Gaming uh, channel. If you want to come check us out, we do a lot of crazy stuff on there. We're also available in podcast form. Yes, for all your podcasting. Uh, wants and desires. If you look at us and you're like, oh God, I can't take that, you can just listen to it. We get that a lot. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, we also want to mention that uh, uh, in just a few, what is it, September, in two months effectively, yes. it will be uh, the Thanks for Giving uh, ARG Marathon. Brent is engineering. He's like a devious scientist. He's, he's calculating and working diligently to uh, ensure. Uh, what about ten hours of, of gaming goodness? I think that's what we're going to shoot for. So yeah. that, that that should be a lot of fun. I think the boat's going to join us for some of that. So we should have a good time playing uh, requests from our various buddies and you know uh, all, all the people Patreon and stuff. And I guess you're still you're getting ready to issue some sort of uh, decree on how that's going to work. Yeah, I'm hoping to get those out uh, this week. Actually, I'm hoping that we can uh, compile a list and go put those out to our Patreons this week. Great. It might just go up as a Patreon post. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, please check that. But <clears throat> we're going to try to uh, reach out individually. But it might just go up as a as a massive post to everyone, or and locked behind the Patreon wall. We, and we we will uh, we'll say something on the show when we, when we before we kick kick it off. Uh, Brent, what, what and what's going on in the chat room? Uh, we've got a pretty good crowd. As as we seem to uh, put together, we got Angus Pixels. Picard, Graham W. Vecchi. Thank you, Graham. You are a, you are rock solid every week of getting us a review in, and we really, really appreciate it. He bad mouth that. hobo, though. That's, a, that's okay. I mean, not everyone's going to love Hob. That's okay. From the planet Oba. You're an idiot. Uh, Curtis Boyle made an appearance. Uh, free lunch. You love reading little text, don't you? It, I like, you know. Mohawk Mob made, uh, came by. Man, there was so much chat. There's so much scrolling up. Fair fight. Welcome. Fair fight. I love it. Uh, uh, if I missed your name, I'm sorry. There's so much chatter to this week. And he can't and hurt. I, and he I has love trouble it. reading little stuff. Too. I have trouble just reading. So. <laughs> hey, we want to thank the our... card. We want to thank our good buddy, the Dunk. Duncan Styles is Dunk in there today for uh, providing our, our crazy Tron-like intros and, and background stuff. We want to thank our good buddy, the Bark Bit, who does our closing theme. Yes. Thank you, Bark Bit. Beautiful. Well done, sir. So next week, we will go down the modern path of steam. Yes. I, I don't know how that's going to go. But I think it's going to go awesome. I think there's some good history there, too. Well, Steam's been around for a good number of years now. Oh, absolutely. And so they, they do have quite a classic lineup on there. So it should be a lot of fun. So, uh, join us next week, same bat time, same bat channel. You got anything else you want to add? Uh, everybody out there, have a good week. Right on. We'll see you guys next week. Until then, hobo! Hobo!